Garth, Hello what there. an honor to be speaking to you today. How are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. It is indeed an honor um, for you. In the 1980s, acclaimed horror author Garth Marenghi wrote, produced, and starred in Dark Place, a supernatural medical horror drama so controversial it has hardly screened since. After years away from the spotlight, Garth returns with his latest book, Terror Tome, which follows author Nick Steen's battles with the paranormal. It has been a while since we've heard from you, Garth. Uh, besides writing your new book, what have you been up to? Evolving mentally and spiritually, not physically, as I've been in peak physical condition for over two decades now, which I put down to uh, an aggressive eating habit that simultaneously burns calories while I ingest. Um, but evolving in all other senses, ascending to a plane of consciousness that will enable me to steer rudderless humanity toward calmer and more enlightened waters. Um, that and I went to Corfu a couple of times too. Uh, and you don't often give interviews. I, I, I question, do you have an open disdain for the press or is it more of a private disdain? It's a complete and all-consuming disdain, which I express openly and privately wherever and whenever possible. For instance, now, um, you know, I have no problem in expressing my deep and wholehearted disdain for you, your publication, uh, whatever it be, and all your profession represents, including any of your collected associates, family or progeny that they hold dear. I, and I appreciate you taking the time to to slum it with me regardless. Um, and, and I did have a note here in the about the author section of your new book, Terror Tome, which is going to be published very soon here. Your bio notes that you are an honorary fellow and, and it seems that the the bio stops on on that. I was just curious as to what you were an honorary fellow of. Uh, it's an on, an honorary fellow of the Literary Association of Horrific and Explicit Prose, gotcha. uh, formerly the Order of the Onyx Rat. Um, yep. We're blasphemous as a rule, but we refuse to disrobe our annual AGM, unlike the Order of the Starved Weasel, who conduct all business sans vêtements. Um, and the last I heard. Richard Osman was trying to join both, but no one will propose him. Another thing that I learned uh, through reading your biography is that you you spent nine years as part of a library reading group honing your craft. What did you learn about the depths of horror during that time? That it's almost impossible to conduct live readings in an environment where a noise, especially screaming, is frowned upon, and where erotica is considered an outrage to public decency, even though libraries are the one place where the geriatric can still access free risque material uh, without needing to ask someone to reach for the top shelf. Plus, uh, if I signed any of my own books, they were technically considered damaged and I was billed accordingly. Pretty hellish, as you can probably imagine. Well, you've moved quite on from that. And and again, we have your new book here, Terror Tome, which is an absolute, the industry term would be a pants shitter of a book. And, and in that book, we meet Nick Steen, your newest hero, a man of action, a ladies man, something of a genius in, in literary mm -hmm. sense and otherwise. And, and I'm curious, what of yourself did you pour into that character, if anything? You know, I naturally embody all of my characters heroic qualities um, but I generally tend to hold back a little bit each book to keep my next character interesting for example you know Nick Steen is six foot one but I'm six foot two uh, Nick Steen is a genius uh, I'm part deity um, an ancient Norse god in actual fact um, so it's important to hold a little bit back you know not least money you know in fiction and in life you have to hold stuff back don't give any any spare money away keep it for yourself you may need it and I, I, I do have to commend you on the sensitivity with which you wrote those um, those graphic typewriter sex scenes. Mm. Uh, what was yeah. on your mind during those passages? Uh, how to extricate myself from my own machine, if I'm frank with you, um, because I did it with my own typewriter as research for this book. But wow. it took two weeks. It took actually took two weeks to extricate my thickage from the carriage return lever, which had snagged on thatch. Uh, during which period I wrote the scene in question and dined largely alone. Well, sometimes we have to throw ourselves into our art to better understand it. And, and quite brave of you, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, I wouldn't Nick, recommend. 
No, no, for professionals only, I would say. Terror Tome sees Nick Steen through three tales of gut-wrenching terror, including the final of the trio, The Dark Fractions, which sees Nick grappling with malevolent shades of his own twisted personality. Quite literally. If Nick's darker fractions are indeed some way a reflection of you, their creator, um, mm -hmm. what aspect of your pro uh, personality do you believe that the wrestling demon represents? I was very <laughs> disturbed by that that passage of its gruesome attempts to kind of rip Nick's ass off. That was very yes. horrific to me. As unacceptable as it may seem to modern readers, um, physical combat is an art. Mm. And wrestling, particularly grappling part naked with sweaty fingers, is the epitome of the form. Grappling mano a mano, whether to rip the arse free from one's opponent or de-cheek them by degrees, is an urge perennial as time. So literary sensitivity, as you so rightly say, is key here. You know, this passage isn't about rectal rupturing, it's about grippage. And it is certainly one of the most gripping passages in the novel, if you would excuse the pun. Uh, you spend over two pages describing Nick and Roz's attempts to change the batteries in a flashlight in the middle of a very stressful mm -hmm. situation. Why yeah. do you find it so important to flesh out those fine details in your prose? We see writings as a balance, okay? It's a balance between hitting the minimum number of words for a quick style or needing to think ahead while your brain would actually be rather watching TV while typing at the same time. So, you know, writing's an art form, of course, but it's also a physical activity. The two don't always need to occur at the same time. As long as the manuscript mixes typing with thinking in some basic form at some point between commencement and conclusionment, then that's all the average or stupid reader will really care about. So, you know, you've got to think in practical terms. And I, I do admit, I, I found myself having to look up a few of the words that you used. Um, it, yeah. It's, a little above my level, to be honest, but exactly. quite inspiring. All the same, uh, you do seem to have a combative relationship with punctuation in your prose. Where does that animosity come from? Uh, instinctual rebellions. It's ingrained, and that's it's without an apostrophe. Bad grammatics, no question mark. Or maverickivity, again, no question mark. You tell me, ellipsis, not full stop. Another ellipsis. Three dots, full stop, ellipsis, question mark. I think that says it all, really. Ellipsis. Oh, okay. Are there... No, okay, great. Well, we can move on then. Nick has a truly beautiful friendship with Bruford the Psychic Dugong. Yeah. Uh, that, was a, that was a relationship I really enjoyed uh, mm -hmm. tracking throughout the novel. Uh, do you think that the world is ready to accept such a close relationship twixt man and porpoise? Well, hopefully after Terra Tome there will be. You know, um, mankind needs to understand and empathize with its aquatic cousins. It's terrible, I would say, what mankind's done to sea life. Stealing, selling their blubber, sticking shark fins in soup to scare young children. You know, I can see the sense in strapping explosives to dolphins for naval combat and or suicidal strikes against enemy destroyers. And, you know, I've never objected to scientific experiments, you know, trying to merge man with shark, for example, to create some kind of deep sea super aquatic soldier. That gets my vote. But it's, it's really the price of cod and haddock now. It's, it's shot up. We've fished these guys to extremes, and I hate Pollock. So we've really got to, you know, sort it out. In your acknowledgement, uh, acknowledgements for the book, you do reference this as, as volume one. Uh, do we have, yeah. can we look forward to a volume two of the Terror Tome in the future? And do you have any designs on what that would look like? Uh, there is a volume two. I will be writing it, not Nick Steen, um, just in case you're confused. I'm often um, confused. Yeah, that's right. I mean, so yes, I will be writing it. I don't know when. Um, again, time is always the issue here, you know, because minutes, seconds turn into minutes, minutes turn into hours, hours into days, days into weeks, weeks into months, months into years, and so on and so forth, decades. Who knows? I will be in battling time but I'll do my best to bring you volume two in good time. As we know in these modern times, most people can't read and, and rely on yeah. screen adaptations of books to 
uh, to take in literature in some way, watered down as yeah. that may be. Do you have any uh, sort of desire to adapt Terror Tome to the screen? And and would you play Nick Steen in such case? It would all depend largely on money. How much we're at play? Is it big budget? Is you know how much of that budget comes to me? Um, how much can we pull back? You know, how cheaply can we get people to do it? It's a lot of questions with these things, possibly. Uh, I would like to close this interview by uh, by bringing in one of your one of your contemporaries. We have a message here from uh, American horror director. You, you take that for yeah. what it's worth, uh, Mike Flanagan. Uh, take it away, Mike. Well, we we live by his Bible. You know, uh, he I think he famously said. Um, that uh, a lot of writers use uh, subtext and they're all cowards. Um, I, I agree with that. Uh, but yes, uh, author, Dreamweaver, plus actor, Garth Marenghi, um, please, please express to him um, that nothing would make us happier than to have Garth Marenghi share some words of creativity um, around, around the fire. Um, I think he could, he could bring an enormous amount of incredible you know, creative perfection to something like that. Look, Mike, sitting around a woodland fire in the fall, which is incidentally called autumn, by the way, toasting marshmallows and swapping Halloween-based platitudes amid tedious retellings of the local boogeyman slash sex pest. That's all very well, but you're the one with the Netflix deals. Boggy Creek to my ass. how much are you talking? Garth, we're at the end of our time today. Do you have any parting words of wisdom for our horror-loving audience? Not really. Um, buy my book, please. I guess I have to say please. That's what um, Hodder have indicated. Please, I hate saying it. Please buy my book. Read it. Absorb it. Learn. Then think. Then act. Garth, thank you. And much. then, and then evolve garth thank you very much for your time today and thank you as always be careful out there in the cosmos i will you too tom right